Welcome to another deep dive. Get ready to have your mind blown about something you probably see every day. Blue Eyes by Paul Elms Bacardi. We're going to journey through time to uncover the origins of this striking feature. And trust me, the story is wilder than a blockbuster movie. You're absolutely right. What's so captivating about Blue Eyes is that unlike what many people assume, um, they're not some ancient feature of our species. Okay. They're actually a surprisingly recent development in human history. Really? Appearing on the scene only about 6,000 to 10,000 years ago. Okay, let's unpack that timeline. You're saying that everyone with blue eyes today, from those icy cool Vikings to that surfer dude catching waves in Australia, can trace their ancestry back to this one ancestor from thousands of years ago. That's right. That's insane. It might sound unbelievable, but that's the beauty of genetics. Researchers have analyzed the DNA of thousands of people with blue eyes and discovered a fascinating pattern. They all share the exact same mutation on the same gene. That is seriously wild. So we're talking about a single individual who lives somewhere around the Black Sea, who experienced this random DNA change, and bam, blue eyes were born. Bam. But what's actually happening at the genetic level? How does this mutation actually lead to blue eyes? It all boils down to melanin, the pigment responsible for giving our eyes, skin, and hair their color. We all have a gene called OCA2, which plays a key role in melanin production. This specific mutation throws a wrench in the system, causing a significant reduction in the melanin produced specifically within the iris that's the colorful part of your eye. So less melanin equals lighter eyes, right? That makes sense. But why blue? Why not say green or hazel? What makes this mutation result in that distinct blue hue? That's where the science gets even cooler. You see, it's not just about the amount of melanin, but also how light interacts with it. With less melanin in the iris, light scatters differently. Imagine a prism splitting light into a rainbow. A similar thing is happening here. The blue wavelengths are reflected more prominently, giving those eyes their captivating blue color. Wow, so it's like how the sky looks blue. It's all about how light is bouncing around. Okay, so we've got this one individual with this new mutation, and suddenly, blue eyes are spreading like wildfire across Europe. How did it happen? Did they have, like, hundreds of kids or something? Well, it's not quite as simple as one super prolific individual. The spread of blue eyes is likely due to a combination of factors. Think migration patterns and a fascinating concept called genetic drift. Okay, genetic drift. It sounds like something I should totally know, but could you give me a quick refresher? Imagine a bag of marbles, half glue and half red. If you randomly grab a handful, you might not get an even split. You might end up with more blue or red just by pure chance. Genetic drift is similar in small, isolated populations. These random fluctuations in gene frequencies can occur. Oh, okay. As early Europeans migrated and formed new settlements, those carrying the blue eye mutation might have had a greater chance of passing it on, not because it was inherently advantageous, but simply due to chance in these smaller gene pools. So it's not necessarily that blue eyes offered some incredible survival benefit. It's more like a roll of the genetic dice. Exactly. Migration, chance, and who knows, maybe even a little bit of, hey, those baby blues are cute, thrown in for good measure. <laughs> I can see it. So this random mutation, this blip on the radar of human evolution, might have influenced who found who attractive, and that in turn shaped the genetic makeup of entire populations. Absolutely. And that brings us to another point of debate. Was there also an element of sexual selection at play? Were those baby blues considered a rare and desirable trait, giving our blue-eyed ancestors an edge in finding a mate? It makes you wonder, right? If something is initially rare, and then throughout history and across cultures, there are all these stories, myths about a particular feature. Well, it makes you think about how these perceptions might have influenced who people chose to have children with. You're spot on. It's a complex interplay of genetics, migration, and cultural perceptions. And speaking of migration, let's shift gears and look at how blue eyes spread across the globe. It wasn't a simple conquest, and even today, the distribution of blue eyes is pretty fascinating. Okay, so let's dive into that. We've established that blue eyes originated from this one ancestor and spread through Europe, but they're not as globally dominant as one might assume. Why is that? You're right, it wasn't a global takeover. Even within Europe, the distribution of blue eyes isn't uniform. It's true. I've always been curious about how some regions seem to have a much higher concentration of blue eyes than others. Absolutely. Take Finland and Estonia, for instance. They have some of the highest percentages of blue-eyed individuals globally, with figures reaching up to a staggering 80% of the population. 80%? That's incredibly high. What factors might contribute to such a concentration of blue eyes in those specific regions? 
It's a bit of a puzzle, but it likely boils down to those factors we discussed earlier. Migration patterns, genetic drift, and possibly even a touch of sexual selection within those historically more isolated populations. Remember that founder effect we mentioned? It plays a role here. Okay, you're going to have to break down that founder effect for me. Of course. The founder effect is essentially a specific example of genetic drift in action. Imagine a small group of individuals migrating to a new, isolated area. They carry only a subset of the genetic diversity from their original population. Now, let's say a few members of this founding group happen to have the gene for blue eyes. Their descendants in that isolated region will inherit those genes, and the trait becomes much more common within that specific population, even if it was relatively rare in the larger original population. Ah, so it's like a genetic bottleneck where certain traits get amplified because of the initial gene pool of that smaller group. It makes sense why Finland and Estonia, with their unique histories and populations, might see such a high prevalence of blue eyes. But then zooming out, why haven't blue eyes become more widespread globally? That's where the story of human interconnectedness comes into play. While blue eyes did become prevalent in certain regions, particularly in Northern Europe, remember the vast majority of the world's population doesn't have blue eyes. Right, brown eyes are far more common globally. Exactly. And as populations become more interconnected through history, people migrate, cultures interact, and individuals from different backgrounds have families, you have this beautiful blending of genes happening. It's like mixing different colors of paint on a palette. The more you mix and blend, the more diverse and nuanced the results become. So even though blue eyes were concentrated in certain pockets, Increased globalization and intermarriage throughout human history have led to a more even distribution of different genetic traits worldwide. Precisely. And this trend is reflected in other physical characteristics as well, not just eye color. We're seeing a fascinating melting pot of traits as humanity continues to connect and intermingle. But let's not forget, beyond the genetics and migration patterns, blue eyes have held a particular fascination throughout history and across cultures. Absolutely. It's almost impossible to think about blue eyes without thinking about all the poems, songs, and stories that celebrate them. They've been linked to everything from beauty and purity to certain personality traits and even mystical qualities in some cultures. It's amazing how a single physical trait can carry so much weight in terms of cultural meaning and symbolism. For sure. For example, in many Western cultures, blue eyes have often been portrayed as a symbol of beauty innocence, even having a certain ethereal quality. Think of classic artwork depicting angels or mythical beings. They almost always have those piercing blue eyes. It's true, and these perceptions aren't limited to Western cultures. For instance, in ancient Egypt, blue eyes were believed to hold a special significance often associated with good luck, protection, and divinity. People even wore amulets and talismans featuring blue eyes for good fortune. It's incredible how a simple genetic variation can take on such powerful cultural and symbolic meanings across different societies and throughout history. It really highlights how intertwined our biology is with our cultural perceptions and interpretations. It really makes you think about how much cultural significance we attach to physical features. Like these traits become woven into the fabric of our collective imaginations, influencing our art, our beliefs, even our sense of identity. Absolutely. And it reminds us that our understanding of something like eye color can't be limited to just genetics. It's this fascinating interplay of science and culture, nature and nurture. Totally. So as we wrap up our deep dive into the world of blue eyes, what are the key takeaways you hope our listeners will walk away with? Well, first and foremost, I hope it sparks a sense of wonder about the hidden stories encoded within our genes. Something as seemingly simple as blue eyes can reveal so much about human history migration patterns and the incredible power of chance and adaptation. It's like carrying around a history book in our DNA. We often think about history as something we read in books or learn in school, but it's also written within us, passed down through generations. Exactly. And beyond the genetics, I think it's crucial to recognize how our understanding of traits like eye color intersects with culture, perception, and even bias. It's a reminder to approach these topics with nuance and to appreciate the incredible tapestry of human diversity. Well said. It's like we've journeyed all the way back to a single ancestor, witnessed the spread of this striking trait across continents, and explored how it became intertwined with our cultural stories. And through it all, we've uncovered the remarkable interplay of chance adaptation and human interconnectedness that continues to shape who we are today. It really leaves you with a sense of awe, doesn't it? To think if that one individual thousands of years ago hadn't experienced that random mutation, would blue eyes even exist today? Would we be telling a different story? It's a question we can't definitively answer, of course, but it highlights how seemingly small events, a single genetic tweak, 
a chance encounter, a migration across a vast landscape, can have ripple effects that echo through generations, shaping the world as we know it. It's a powerful reminder that we're all part of this grand interconnected human story, and every single one of us carries a piece of that history within us. And the story continues to unfold with each new generation full of wonder complexity and the endless potential for discovery. Beautifully put. And on that note, we'll leave you to ponder the mysteries hidden within your own genes and the stories they hold. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep diving deep.